So we're gonna come around here and open this up and show you the fire. She's burning. Now this one has a bigger fan, higher velocity, more heat coming up the stack. It has this heat exchanger that it will quickly open this. A yeah, heat exchanger that is a multi-pass heat exchanger. It's got the, uh, the heat comes from the back all the way to the front. Ooh, that's hot. And then it turns around and goes to the back again. So it's a multi-pass, but it's not all water-cooled. That center plate is just a plate of steel. There's water on both sides. You can kind of see the size of that heat exchanger. And what we noticed yesterday in the pre-burn, when the stack temperature was dropping, we knew that something was going on. The water temperature would be dropping too on the heat master, and it was bridging. The two logs would stay on the outside. You know, even they would stack up on the outside and the center would burn out. So that we noticed, you had to knock it down a couple of times. Whereas the portage of main with the bricks going all around the firebox, there's two and a half inches of brick. That really does enhance the burn and makes it burn a lot more, more complete. We find the ashes are quite a bit finer. We're actually going to show the ashes on both of them too. At times we notice that the heat master temperature is dropping and it's due to it bridging. The wood will stay along the outside wall of the uh, furnace up against the water and it's just not water enough to get it to burn, I guess, and just hangs in there and we've had to roll the logs down. Whereas the Portage of Maine has two and a half inches of refractory surrounding the whole base of the fire. So that enhances the combustion and makes it burn better. It burns down a lot cleaner down to the last bit of wood. That's another complaint or a reason that we've heard that people like the refractor brick versus water up against the fire. Just burning fire up against the water just simply doesn't work right. It, well, the fire wants to burn at a higher temperature. Remember the fire triangle. It was three equal sides for a really good reason. The fire triangle had, had on one side, it had fuel. The other side, it had the oxygen. And the third side, it had temperature. All of them were really important. They were actually equally important. That's why it was a fire triangle. So the temperature of the burn that the refractory brick gives us is significant to the fire triangle and complete combustion. The more complete combustion means it will have less scope. And you can see that it's cleared right up. There's no scope coming out of the Port of Germain. It's started up a few minutes ago and uh, it's burning very clean already. Whereas the heat master is still putting out some smoke. Um, the Port of Germain has gone through a cycle. We made a decision when it reaches 175, to be fair, we'll plug them both in again and see how it goes. We'll keep documenting this. These numbers will be available. This one's at 167. Stack temperature will keep rising up. It's interesting to note that this one's rated at 375,000 BTUs and it wouldn't overpower a uh, even 150,000 BTU unit heater, like a shop unit heater is what we're running. We're actually running two of them on it. You can see the smoke drifting out. It's gonna evacuate the smoke out of the firebox. Oh yeah, it's burning good. But you see the logs on the outside are gonna stay there and the center is hollowing out a little bit. We'll give it another cycle or two, see what it does here, and then maybe push it down if we need to. So there's our wood in the fire box. You can see there's no bridging happening. It's going down nice and evenly. Sometimes people are pretty amazed what the bricks are doing is that it doesn't smoke so bad. You can see that there's not a lot of smoke coming out. Matter of fact, there is no smoke coming out the door. Probably some vapors I see, tiny bit of smoke. Before we put the refractor brick in that stove, if you were to open that door, there'd be a lot of smoke coming. So the refractor brick is making it burn water cleaner and drier. So uh, we we'll wanna talk about the front here. That's hot, you can't hold your hand on it. And so any heat that's lost from around your door dams here, that's directly to the boiler. Now they've narrowed it down and bought the insulation right out as much as they could, but there is heat loss. Um, you know, here and around your heat exchange here too. They have a insulated door, but there's still gonna be heat loss. And then the wind comes along and blows it away. It blows the heat away. The uh, Port of Germain, again, is insulated out here. It's hot from the sun. So the uh, insulated door here, it's also insulated, but we also bought our insulation all the way around here, all the way out to the door jam. 
So storm door, no storm door. People know about how effective a storm door is on their home. But what's concerning me is the uh, heat faster is not gaining temperature too well. It's got a 567 degree stack temperature, but it's problem is, is it's bridging and that's why it's not gaining. It's 172 degrees, right? Yeah. So it's been, it hasn't cycled in the last, it's been on 40 minutes, about 45 minutes, and it has not cycled. Whereas the Portage of Maine has cycled two times. So it's been given lower temperature water to the radiators, to the heat emitters, to the uh, hanging unit heaters, we should call them. And so we're gonna see, I wanna show the bridging, what's been going on in here. So let's have a look in the fire box. And you can look down underneath, you can see how it curved out in the bottom and you'll see them logs will fall down. And then we expect the stack temperature to rise. So quickly off your dial. Keep going up, but this is what I want you to see right here. Watch this rise here. It's just flying up. So 584, it was at whatever earlier. And it's just climbing, climbing, climbing. But now she's putting out. She's really smoking because it was knocked down. Um, whereas the Port of Germain, we haven't had to do that. We haven't had to knock it down. And it keeps up. It's been cycling twice in the last 45 minutes compared to what the heat master is just running continuously. Now I'm sure it will catch up and shut down. Okay, we want to talk about the knockdown that we just did and why we had to do that. Um, normally, a guy puts wood in maybe after supper, let's say six o'clock or seven o'clock, he fills his boiler up for the night. But what we're finding is that uh, if we didn't do that knockdown, it couldn't maintain temperature. It was actually losing temperature or just holding, it wouldn't get the set point. And so it was delivering cooler water to the radiators here, to the unit meters. So same scenario in your, out in your farm, your acreage, you've got it going, you filled up the boiler, maybe after supper, it's cold winter night, and you go in the forest there, part of your heating, maybe is heating up, uh, you've had your showers and taken some hot water to mat, so it's taxed the boiler pretty good, it started burning. Then before heating comes on at your shop or your barn, um, taxes the boiler, takes more heat out of the boiler, it's burning good. It gets the center burnt out of it. And then if it doesn't fall down because it's burning up against the cold water, hot for water, but cold for combustion, it doesn't fall down or it doesn't break down. It doesn't get combusting that wood on the outside edges. You get the bridging action that we've been experiencing. We experienced it in all three of the pre burns and we're experiencing it again today. No one's gonna get up here and night go knock down the wood. Actually, it might have lost the temperature just now. It, yes, it did get the temperature. It got to 180 as we were talking there. 255 is when it last closed down. One hour, 10 minute cycle to get up to temperature. Same unit heaters again. Uh, whereas this one's doing a cycle, it catches up in 10 minutes. 10, 15 minutes after shutdown. We suspect the problem is that it's bridging inside again. And so we're gonna actually open the door here and give it a little rake down and it'll start taking off again. This is the third time we've had to knock this one down. If you look right down in the center below that red hot one, see how hot the wood gets in the middle? It gets burning really well, burning out the center here. And then they got pretty solid logs. Today, we want to show the temperature of this boiler for the last half hour is not getting past 166. So it's falling on its face again. It cannot keep up to 250,000 BTU unit heaters. It's dropping in temperature. Then, if you come and look what they're doing when they don't have any refractory brick because the fire triangle is not being applied, they're not following the laws of physics. They put an air box on here, four and a quarter inches, and a diameter of what is that, nine inches? With a 1.6 amp motor, I believe it is. They have an air box going down to the bottom that is uh, six and a half by six. Um, 
They have an actuator required. It's actually gonna open and close the damper. There's a damper in here that closes it off and it does close it off pretty good. So it goes down to a whisper of smoke going out on the Portage Main Ultimizer. It has a weighted damper that opens when the fan comes on. This is two and a half inches across and we said it was about six inches in diameter. We have a 1.1 amp motor. Is that what he said? I believe 1.1 amp motor. The air box is four inches by four inches by four and a half inches. Three inch hose going down into there. What I'm trying to show is that there's a lot less air required to go into the stove because of the refractory brick puts things into balance. We bring our air up from under the fire and above the fire. We've got a log in there and some coals. It's having a hard time getting above 163 degrees. We've turned down to just one unit heater blowing at the moment. Um, it's not putting as much heat up the stack because it's a lower water temperature and less fire in here. It's pretty much done. That log stayed on the side for a while. We rolled it in a while ago. Uh, we were trying to keep the temperature up in this one. It's to our advantage to have it as high, get, keep the water temperature up as much as it can so that the Delta T and the heat extraction would be more comparable, more fair to what the Portage Domain is doing. This one's just started up again here. It was at 170 and it's got considerably more wood in it at the moment. Amazing. The Portage Domain Ultimizer 3444. We've been doing this for over eight hours. We put about 314 pounds of wood in each of the stoves, each of the boilers this morning. And uh, we started the test around 11.30. And uh, this is what you would save. It's probably at least 25% savings over what the other boiler that we burnt today. The uh, heat master and the fact that a lot of times, unless we knocked it down, it was bridging and it wasn't putting out as much heat. The Delta T would have been lesser. Whereas this one was getting up to temperature pretty consistently within you know a given time, it would be up to temperature and then shut down and then get up to temperature and shut down. The time is 9.43 p.m. Heatmaster is at 163 degrees Fahrenheit and the stack temperature is at 377 degrees Fahrenheit. The Portage Domain is at 172 degree water temperature and the stack temperature is 183. What we've learned in this here side-by-side -side comparison is that the Heatmaster would bridge repeatedly and that was a hindrance for keeping up temperature um, it had a lot longer cycle times, whereas the Porta Germain was cycling on and off almost every 15 minutes or less. It wasn't bridging. We never had to knock down the wood. I don't feel that anybody's going to want to go out and knock down the wood during the nighttime. The Porta Germain did not bridge. It didn't bridge because of the refractory brick and the air above the fire and the air coming from underneath. Whereas the Heat Master, just brings the air from underneath and it burns out a tunnel underneath the uh, right above the grates where the air is coming up through the grates, burns out a tunnel. The logs on the cold outer wall don't fall down and they create a bridge which makes the water temperature drop down and pretty soon that fire pretty much goes out. It won't provide the heat that's needed or required for your heat load.